welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. So a couple of nights ago, I put together this The Shark Guitar video, and when I was doing research for that one, I came across something interesting. And it has to do with these guys, Brooks and Dunn. Now, if you're not familiar with this band, they are part of the prime country years. You've probably heard their songs even if you're not a country fan. My dad was always listening to this type of country music when he was taking me to his house, so I recognize songs like Neon Moon, The Boot Scootin' Boogie, that's just a classic song by Maria. But apparently at the Country Music Hall of Fame, they have a couple of really interesting Les Pauls and custom ordered mandolins and things, so I thought we'd go ahead and check those things out today. Starting with the one that started this all. Take a look at this thing, the Neon Moon. I believe it's an ES-175. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. And obviously, it's had a bunch of changes. No more F-holes, they got rid of all the pickups, just threw a floating mini humbucker, changed your control layout. I think they just borrowed the body style. But this design is just so beautiful. The way that they have this light colored moon right there on top of this dark blue finish. It's like you're looking at the lake and the moon's reflecting off of it. It's just such a cool design because you get that stark white binding with the Florentine cutaway. And I like the fact that they ditched the pick guard even though it looks a little bit goofy. And you get your controls down here, master volume, master tone with this style of trapeze tailpiece. Your floating bridge doesn't get in the way of your moon. And it appears to have an ebony fretboard and it's inlaid neon moon. Now that's not my favorite. I think it would have been cool if they would have done like a 12th fret moon or have some cloud inlays or something. But I get it. It was a custom order for them and it was meant to be displayed. So of course you're going to put that on there. But then if we really zoom in here, you can see there's a man in the moon on the headstock. <laughs> That's just such a cool inventive guitar. It's also been used in concert at some point in time. You can see him using it right there. But upon seeing that, that's when I found this. Apparently they had more than one made. This one is infinitely inferior in my eyes though, because where's the moon? Maybe it only comes out at like certain angles or certain times of the day. <laughs> I don't think it's that crazy. I've got to say, I think it looks better in Gibson stock photos as compared to what this one is within their display. But an interesting guitar that I wanted to talk about nonetheless. And now that I know that the one with the moon lights up, it kind of reminds me of one of those Rickenbacker light show models. Quite a fascinating custom order there. But then I found some other guitars that just blew my mind. So first off in this exhibit that they have, it's a Merle Haggard Tough Dog Telly. I've actually reviewed one of those if you're interested in learning more about them. This one, it's honestly not the nicest one I've ever seen. Sometimes you can get some really nice quilty ones like the one that I was lent to do the review and demo. But this one, maybe it's just because of the direct lighting on it or something, not that attractive. By far, the coolest attribute of these guitars is the neck through vibe of them, but they're actually just a set neck. But hey, check out this mandolin. Looks like a Gibson Master Model F5G, something like that. And they just put a bunch of mirror chips on it to, you know, make it look fancy. I don't know how I feel about this one, to be honest. It's certainly an eye-catching piece, so I'll give it that. But take a look at these two sweet Les Pauls. Which one do you think is my favorite? Of course, it's this alligator. I used to think the snake bit Les Paul was pretty cool, but this thing. <laughs> Nobody's looking for it and it'll probably never be for sale, but man, I love this. Well, I guess I better figure out, is it a crocodile or an alligator? I feel like no matter what I say, I'm going to be wrong. So we're just going to call it a gator. But then again, it's just a carving. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it is so beautiful. I love the way that they matched its tail and its body with the Les Paul shape. That's what makes this perfect. It's a little bit out there and in your face. Whereas the snake pit just had this relief carving in the one area on the guitar. But he just looks so happy to see you. It's like, hey, come play the guitar. But when you really look into this, you can start to see some more interesting things. First off, I'm betting that this is also a relief carving. So it's going to be sticking off the top of the instrument. It's not just like a finish or a painting on it. So you should technically be able to feel these scales if it's what I think it is. But these knobs right here, they appear to be made of wood from what I can see. It has to be a historic spec Les Paul because that's an ABR1 bridge. And take a look at our pickup covers. You've got the Gibson Custom Art Historic logo embossed on them. So that tells me that these are actually pretty old guitars birthed around the same time as the Snake Pit. So it's very likely that Bruce Kunkel also did this work of art. And if you really zoom in there, the bridge pickup actually says Kicks Brooks. 
It's not quite clear to me what color the instrument is though. I'm really wanting to believe that it's like a dark green color. But now take a look at our fretboard here. It took me so long to figure out what they had done here. And then as soon as I saw it, it's like, yes, yes. Because <laughs> we've only got one photo to go off of here once again. But you've got the head, you've got the body, and then you've got the tail. You know how they swim in the waters partially submerged? And then you also have the water lines right here. That is just beautiful what they've done with that ebony fretboard. Now it's not quite clear to me what is on the headstock. Kind of looks like a dancing cowboy or something scared that this giant gator is coming to eat him. I would love to do a full review and demo of this guitar. I could probably get Gibson to make me one if I wanted to. And typically I do not like single ply bound headstocks, but this one I might make an exception for. But it does appear to actually be a Les Paul custom maybe, because it looks like it has the back binding as well. So maybe they've just mixed custom and standard specs here. Moving on to our other one here. It's some sort of a cowgirl influenced piece. Not my favorite design in the world, but I like it due to the use of the lasso. So she's got her lasso here, it's roped around, and that's what they're using for the binding of the guitar. I don't think it's actually bound in any other way. Mr. Kunkel must have like relief carved the edge to slightly stick out, and then that's the whole edge of the guitar. That's fancy, I like that. Then they made it look kind of like tooled leather right here. Maybe that's supposed to symbolize like the firing of her firearm. Kind of a strange looking cowgirl in my opinion, but <laughs> he had to do the best that he could. He's got this tailpiece in the way here. He only has this much room to work with. So I think he did pretty good with what he had. A leather pick guard would have looked pretty cool. I'm not quite sure what material that is, but take a look at this. It's so strange. You get a cream pickup ring and then a black pickup ring. For some reason, it works. All in all, I think cream plastics would have made the whole guitar jive, but it makes this part of the instrument seem darker, and then this part seem much more elaborate and bright. And maybe this is a reference to another one of their songs that I'm not getting here. Like maybe the Cowgirls Don't Cry song. I don't know, do they have one about a gator? Maybe someone more familiar can fill me in with that, but maybe it's the Boot Scoot and Boogie song, like Gator Boots or something. <laughs> because that's all that seems to show up when I Google that. That would make me like that guitar even more if that's what that was for. After a little bit more digging, I was able to find a clearer photo of this guitar. The pickguard actually appears to be made out of metal, and it reads Brooks and Dunn Neon Circus and Wild West Show. But what I fell in love with are these little knobs. They're either evil looking cookies or little horn toads. And if they're toads, oh my goodness, that has to be my favorite aspect out of this thing. I want little toad knobs. We'll just take a second here to appreciate the beauty of this carving. As far as the inlays here, it looks like a lasso theme once again, all the way up to the face of the headstock this time. And you've just got cowgirls littered across that and another moon. I wasn't a fan of this one at first, but now that I've taken some time to actually look at it, it's an okay design. But if I had to choose between the two of them, I would definitely go with this one. And just for some fun, here's some other guitars that they were using. I can't even quite make out what this design is, but it doesn't appear that attractive. But is that an old style Gibson logo I'm seeing? That's kind of interesting. And then they've got a star in a circle. It looks like some longhorn steers for the inlay. Okay, I think I see it now. It's not fair. I have to look at this tiny photos and you guys get to see it when I blow it up later on. It looks like it's a cowboy or a cowgirl on a horse and they've got that whole lasso thing around the instrument. So maybe that one came first before they got the idea of the relief carving on the cowgirl one. Here it looks like some sort of a L5 in a natural finish that's kind of aged. Not too much to talk on that one, but then switch over to this Les Paul Custom. It kind of looks like a fake but I'm sure that's just the photo angles and the light that's on it. But it's mainly just the lack of the pick guard that's throwing me off here. But we've got some sort of a flame design here, so I'm sure maybe that ties in with one of their other songs. And it's just a regular Black Beauty Les Paul custom otherwise. And the last one that was in photos here is this kind of guitar. This is the guitar that shows up on the used market. The person who owns it thinks it's worth a fortune and then they list it for an arm and a leg and then it sits forever. These promotional guitars are hard to sell, but you know, it was custom ordered for these guys, so I guess it makes sense. Looks like it says Brooks and Dunn, Hot Flash. Which again, I don't know everything about these guys. It must have something to do with this car. But that's likely a custom shop Les Paul special. 
And lastly, who wouldn't want this Kellogg's Corn Flakes box? They've got a cool Les Paul and a Telecaster on it. The only question left, which is your favorite of the Brooks and Dunn collection? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care!